This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading is by Michael Sirwa, Michael.Sirwa, S I R O I S dot com. Penguin Island by Anatole France. Book Six, Modern Times. Book Six, Chapter Three. Count de Maubec de la Dentulinx. The morals of the Jews were not always pure. In most cases they were averse from none of the vices of Christian civilization, but they retained from the patriarchal age a recognition of family ties and an attachment to the interests of the tribe. Pyro's brothers, half-brothers, uncles, great-uncles, first, second, and third cousins, nephews and great-nephews, relations by blood and relations by marriage, and, and all who were related to him, to the number of about seven hundred, were at first overwhelmed by the blow that had struck their relative, and they shut themselves up in their houses, covering themselves with ashes and blessing the hand that had chastised them. For forty days they kept a strict fast, then they bathed themselves and resolved to search, without rest, at the cost of any toil and at the risk of every danger, for the demonstration of an innocence which they did not doubt. And how could they have doubted? Pyro's innocence had been revealed to them in the same way that his guilt had been revealed to Christian Penguinia. For these things, being hidden, assume a mystic character and take on the authority of religious truths. The seven hundred piratists set to work with as much zeal as prudence and made the most thorough inquiries in secret. They were everywhere, they were seen nowhere. One would have said that, like the pilot of Ulysses, they wandered freely over the earth. They penetrated into the war office, and approached, under different disguises, the judges, the registrars, and the witnesses of the affair. Then Greatock's cleverness was seen. The witnesses knew nothing. The judges and registrars knew nothing. Emissaries reached even Pyrot, and anxiously questioned him in his cage, amid the prolonged moanings of the sea and the hoarse croaks of the ravens. It was in vain. The prisoner knew nothing. The seven hundred piratists could not subvert the proofs of the accusation, because they could not know what they were. And they could not know what they were, because there were none. Pyrot's guilt was indefeasible through its very nullity. And it was with a legitimate pride that Greatock, expressing himself as a true artist, said one day to General Panther, This case is a masterpiece. It is made out of nothing. The seven hundred piratists despaired of ever clearing up this dark business, when suddenly they discovered, from a stolen letter, that the eighty thousand trusses of hay had never existed, that a most distinguished nobleman, Count de Maubec, had sold them to the state, that he had received the price, but had never delivered them. Indeed, seeing that he was descended from the richest landed proprietors of ancient Penguinia, the heir of the Maubecs of Denterlinx, once the possessors of four duchies, sixty counties, and six hundred and twelve marquisates, baronies, and viscounties, he did not possess as much land as he could cover with his hand, and would not have been able to cut a single day's mowing of forage off his own domains. As to his getting a single rush from a landowner or a merchant, that would have been quite impossible, for everybody except the ministers of state and the government officials knew that it would be easier to get blood from a stone than a farthing from a Maubec. The seven hundred piratists made a minute inquiry concerning the Count Maubec de Dentelinx's financial resources, and they proved that the nobleman was chiefly supported by a house in which some generous ladies were ready to furnish all comers with the most lavish hospitality. They publicly proclaimed that he was guilty of the theft of the eighty thousand trusses of straw, for which an innocent man had been condemned and was now imprisoned in the cage. Maubec belonged to an illustrious family which was allied to the Draconides. There is nothing that a democracy esteems more highly than noble birth. Maubec had also served in the Penguin army, and since the Penguins were all soldiers, they loved their army to idolatry. Maubec, on the field of battle, had received the cross, which is a sign of honor among the Penguins, and which they valued even more highly than the embraces of their wives. All Penguinia declared for Maubec and the voice of the people, which began to assume a threatening tone, demanded severe punishments for the seven hundred calumniating piratists. 
Maubec was a nobleman. He challenged the seven hundred piratists to combat with either sword, sabre, pistols, carabines, or sticks. Vile dogs, he wrote to them in a famous letter. You have crucified my God, and you want my life too. I warn you that I will not be such a duffer as he was, and that I will cut off your fourteen hundred ears, except my boot on your seven hundred behinds. The chief of the government at the time was a peasant called Robin Mieleur, a man pleasant to the rich and powerful, but hard towards the poor, a man of small courage and ignorant of his own interests. In a public declaration, he guaranteed Maubec's innocence and honor, and presented the seven hundred piratists to the criminal courts, where they were condemned as libelers, to imprisonment, to enormous fines, and to all the damages that were claimed by their innocent victim. It seemed as if Pyrot was destined to remain forever shut in the cage on which the ravens perched. But all the penguins, being anxious to know and prove that this Jew was guilty, all the proofs brought forward were found not to be good, while some of them were also contradictory. The officers of the staff showed zeal but lacked prudence. Whilst Greatalk kept an admirable silence, General Panther made inexhaustible speeches, and every morning demonstrated to the newspapers that the condemned man was guilty. He would have done better, perhaps, if he had said nothing. The guilt was evident, and what is evident cannot be demonstrated. So much reasoning disturbed people's minds. Their faith, though still alive, became less serene. The more proofs one gives a crowd, the more they ask for. Nevertheless, the danger of proving too much would not have been great if there had not been in Penguinia, as there are indeed everywhere, minds framed for free inquiry, capable of studying a difficult question, and inclined to philosophic doubt. They were few, they were not all inclined to speak, and the public was by no means inclined to listen to them. Still, they did not always meet with deaf ears. The great Jews, all the Israelite millionaires of Alca, when spoken to of Pyro, said, We do not know the man, but they thought of saving him. They preserved the prudence to which their wealth inclined them, and wished that others would be less timid. Their wish was to be gratified. End of Book 6, Chapter 3